Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a five color domain aggro deck that features a couple recent additions. We've got four copies of Tribal Flames, can deal X damage to any target where X is the number of basic land types among lands we control, so that can often deal five damage in this deck as early as turn two. And then we've got Wild Nacoddle, a 1-1 one, one that gets plus one plus one if we control a mountain and an additional plus one plus one if we control a plains, so it can easily be a one mana 3-3 three, three in this deck. And then other domain payoffs include the Nishoba Brawler, has power equal to the number of basic land types we control, and then a 3 Toughness and Trample, so a 5-3 Trampler most of the time. And then Territorial Kavu can also be a 5-5 with a full domain, and when it attacks we can either discard a card if we do draw a card, or can exile up to one target card from a graveyard. So if the Kavu starts out at 4 Toughness if we play it on turn 2, then it can often survive some opposing removal spells, like the various burn spells under the Blue Red Wizard deck and then it can often go up to a 5-5 on the following turn so it can be a very nice threat in some matchups and then we also have two copies of Aranda's Firebrand, a 3-1, so one toughness, of course, a bit of a liability in Historic at the moment with Orcish Bowmasters everywhere, so we're only playing two copies instead of the full playset, and when the Firebrand attacks, target creature defending player controls with power less than the Firebrand's power cannot block this turn, and we can also activate its ability once each turn, and that potentially only costs one red mana to activate with a full domain, getting plus two plus two until end of turn, so then it's attacking as a 5-3, making it harder for the opponent to block. And then we also have the full set of Gaia's Might, giving a creature plus one plus one for each basic land type until end of turn, so that can be one mana for plus five plus five, which is about as good as it gets for a pump spell. And then finally we've got a full set of Leyline Binding, which can often be cast for just a single white mana as an instant speed removal spell that can exile any opposing a non-land permanent. So those are the domain payoffs. Now of course we do need to jump through quite a few hoops to enable them, and that's why we have a mana base with lots of tri-lands. Wasn't entirely sure what the optimal mana base was like, but I'm trying just one of each of the tri-lands, which seems to be working out just fine right now. And then a few more shock lands to complement them, missing out on a few shock lands that don't produce red or green, since they won't be able to help us cast a turn 2 territorial kavu, and then one basic land in case we need to search it up, and then four copies of Thrain Portal, which is actually pretty important in a mana base that doesn't have access to any fetch lands, like the modern variant, so this can enter the battlefield as any basic land type we want it to be, which is perfect for completing our domain if we're missing one color, but it does have a few drawbacks, and are stamped if it's past our third land drop, and will also cost us one life if we want to attack it for mana, so it's not the best land in existence, but it's pretty good for this strategy. And then rounding out the deck, we've got a few flex slots that we get to choose. I ended up going for two copies of Teamer Battle Rage, which is a great way to trample over some 1 1 tokens from Orcish Bowmasters, and especially nice when combined with Gaia's Might, giving our creature plus 5 plus 5, and then an additional double strike and trample until after turn. Also, just good naturally with Territorial Kavu, which will be big enough to gain trample right away. Then we also have four copies of Spell Pierce. This is a potential answer to opposing removal spells, can counter an opposing one ring before it lands, and can also potentially be useful against other combo decks that might be faster than our deck. And then we also have two copies of Strangle as more spot removal, great against the Blue Red Wizards deck, which has a lot of three toughness creatures it can take out. And then at uh, three mana, I'm also playing two copies of Crucius. Has been nerfed recently, so now only has one toughness, making it a bit of a liability against opposing Orcish Bowmasters, but I just needed an extra threat that could maybe provide a bit of value late game, can maybe discard Spell Pierce if it's no longer useful, or if we're struggling against a removal heavy deck, we can discard some of our pump spells to dig for more creatures, so that ability can certainly come in handy. And then a two copies of Angel Fire Ignition, which is also great when facing more aggressive strategies, as we can give our creature two plus one counters, Vigilance, Trample, a Lifelink, and Indestructible until out of turn, as well as Haste, so we can potentially play Creature and Ignition in the same turn to hit the opponent out of nowhere. Also very nice when combined with Gaia's Might, so we can gain more life back, and we can also flash it back, so if we discard it to the Kavu's ability, we can still get value from it later. And then we also get to play with Gigantha, the Wellspring, as our companion. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is decent. A little bit slow to get started, since we don't have any untapped lanes. 
But we'll get the green source in place so we can play turn two Nakadal as a 3-3. Three, three. Overgrown Tomb untapped and an Inquisition, that's too bad. Likely takes Territorial Kavu, so we'll need to draw some more threats. Nope, goes for Wild Nakadal, so they might have another removal spell lined up for the Kavu. So just double checking land types, this seems fine. Can cast a one mana binding if needed. Is their opponent Junt colors? And another Inquisition takes probably Kavu or maybe Tribal Flames if they have Fatal Push in hand. Goes for Kavu. Yeah, not the way we wanted to start this game. Could just play Untamed Blood Crypts and then cycle one of these, or I can put Giganta in hand. Or I can just play Tap Land and decide next turn. And then probably want an extra green source. I want to keep Tribal Flames to answer a creature, but uh, yeah, Thoughtseize makes me regret not just firing it off. Opponent does take the Binding after all. And a Tarmogoyf, alright, don't see that every day. So uh, Tribal Flames, Tarmogoyf, play Brawler. Looks good. And then next turn, go for Gigantha. Fatal push as we suspected. And Ignition's gonna be stranded in hand for a while. Okay. Hopefully Gigantha can stick around. Doesn't die to Fatal push at least. But a Thought Seize will take care of it. Spell Pierce a bit late to the party. Can maybe still counter a one ring here. Or a Fable. Alright, now is a good window to draw a creature I can Ignition. Guys might not quite. Yeah, Might is not going to be great against an opponent that can keep up removal. Another Fable. Alright, Firebrand's not bad. So play Firebrand and Ignition it so it doesn't die to Bowmasters anymore. And next turn I could present Lethal with Flashback Ignition Gaius Might. But have to imagine our opponent's going to find some answers. Channeler makes sense in the deck alongside Tarmogoyf, since they both care about card types. And now Riveteer's Charm answers Firebrand. Two mana left after shocking in the Overgrown Tomb. And uh, sure, I'll just play Sacred Foundry. Go to hope to draw a creature. Give it haste with Ignition, maybe Gaius might in the same turn. But now that's the Fable transformed, our door is closing very quickly, and they might have more removal in hand for all we know. Another Fable, that's uh, number three. Pun might also be playing with Bloodbraid Elf, I wouldn't be surprised. Take or draw, Spell Pierce doesn't do anything. Yeah, just uh, didn't quite come together this game. Couple too many lands and uh, also just a tough matchup. A lot of early hand disruption and removal that doesn't really care about how large our creatures are. It's not a great combo. Opponent's gonna copy the Shaman. So is there any sequence that can still win us the game? Wild Nakadal Ignition Gaia Smite, I guess, if her opponent has absolutely nothing. A Brawler unlikely to get there. So should I even bother casting Ignition? I think we uh, just pass. I mean, at this point Spell Pierce doesn't do anything since her opponent's got five treasures. So maybe I should just go for Ignition and just run into the removal spell. If it's a damage based removal spell I guess we could beat it with Gaius Might since our opponent is playing a Delirium deck after all. So they might be able to deal 4 damage to it at instant speed. So maybe I should just wait until I can uh, Ignition with Might backup. Since we're not currently taking a lethal. So do I block? I block and they deal 4 damage, 
That's six total. I guess we go up to eight. But I might need this to present lethals. I don't think I bother blocking. Channeler, that's fine. Take our turn. And another Gaia's Might. So, can we leave double green up here? Should be able to. Moment of truth. Are we dead? Yeah, there's the Unholy Heat. Might in response. Can beat another Unholy Heat. Orcish Bowmasters. Okay. So that resolves. One damage to the Brawler. Gaia Smite. Gets it up to 7 toughness. Opponent's gonna copy the Bowmasters, I see. Okay. That happens. Let's just Gaia Smite now. And we'll see if we get there when the dust settles. Seventeen power trample. That should do it. And wow, our opponent explodes. What an awesome game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Can play turn two Kavu, and then have full domain enabled as soon as we pick up a blue source. So Spell Pierce right now not looking great, but can maybe discard it with the Kavu as well. So I need to get our green source in play. Put on blue-red with Symmetry Sage, so Wizards. Okay, could also just play Wild and Coddle and then uh, play another tapped land. Although against the Wizard deck, they like to have a lot of three damage burn spells. So Kavu is more likely to survive. And now with headquarters, we do have blue unlocked for spell peers, and for a full domain, guidance is going to drop. Okay, but we get to untap with Kavu, which can start attacking and improving our hand. Battle Rage could also be a nice way to close out the game. So likely discarding Savai Triome here. And a Gaius Might plus Battle Rage, I'm looking forward to it. So... Attack for 5, discard and draw, and now we could play a Firebrand instead of Wild Nacoddle. And yeah, if uh, Kavu survives, we could just set up the Wombo Combo, and it looks like they have two burn spells to finish it off. Can still get there with a the Firebrand. Guys, Might plus Battle Rage is going to be 16 damage. So don't mind if I do. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing white mana, only one threat, so this one's pretty lackluster. Okay, this one we can try. And then don't need Thrain Portal. We've got the full domain on turn two. So Kavu, and then double Tribal Flames for an additional 10 damage. Just need to get a couple hits in. Opponent on what could be a uh, Charbelcher combo deck, which is capable of winning on turn 3 with an ideal draw, turn 4 more realistic. Okay, another Kavu is nice. So what we want to do, we do need a second red source for Tribal Flames, so I probably attack with Kavu and not discard anything. So I can play another Kavu and then next turn double Tribal Flames. Could also dig for Spell Pierce, I suppose, maybe that's still worth it. And then technically we would have enough damage next turn. So maybe I should discard our uh, forest to dig for Spell Pierce. Another Kavu instead. 
So play Kavu, portal on red. And then next turn we'll definitely get there. This is Magma Opus, make a treasure, so if they have Iron Crank Feed into Char Belcher, activate, we're dead. A land is tapped, that's good news. Strike it rich, make a treasure. Strike it rich, make another one. So next turn they could likely combo off. But we're not gonna give them an extra turn if we can help it. Can discard to dig for an untapped land now. Spell Pierce, also very useful. And a Binding could have also potentially exiled something. But let's just Tribal Flames for the win. Keep up Spell Pierce just in case. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is promising. Triome into Portal on Red, plays Kavu. A third land gives us Crucius. And then we've got some removal and other interaction. Although I won't be able to play Spell Pierce for a while. Inquisition takes Kavu. Okay, so then we have to decide if we still want to name a red on Thrain Portal. The red black mid range matchup is going to be pretty tough. My opponent took Crucius instead. So play this on red, play Kavu. Hope they don't have Fatal Push or some other spot removal. At least at four toughness, it survives the Bowmasters. Could have also potentially waited one more turn to keep up Spell Pierce. But our opponent, of course, knows about it, so they could just play around it and wait until they have enough mana. Now I get to play Brawler and keep up Spell Pierce if the Auto Tapper lets me. So we've got a nice five powered threat. But the opponent knowing about Spell Pierce definitely makes it worse. Kavu's excellent here, so get in for 5, can spell Pierce if needed, and then play Kavu. Bowmasters instead, that's fine. So they're gonna deal 1 damage, and then attempt to double block, I suppose. So now we could Leyline Binding, and then still trample over. And play Kavu. If we had a Gaius Might, we could have really punished that uh, Bowmaster's play. So expecting at least one creature to eat a removal spell now. Fable, okay. Would have been nice to spell Pierce, but I'm not incredibly threatening here. So now, do I just discard spell Pierce after attacking? I think I do. Dig for another Tribal Flames. Ooh, nice Gaius Might. So now we can just win the game on the spot. Unless our opponent uh, chumps Kavu, then I guess we're going to be one damage short, but still seems good enough. While the coast is clear. Can put him to one. I think I prefer this over playing Wild Nakadal. Although let's say our opponent plays a Shieldred next turn, then it would still be dead. I'm trying to picture the sequence where our opponent survives if they have two removal spells, then I might be better off with a Wild Nakadal in play. Don't expect any sweepers out of their deck. Not sure why it's showing Tribal Flames. Might be a bug. Some weird stuff going on. Shieldred ending up in our graveyard. But it's in the opponents. Tribal Flames also an answer to Shieldred here, dealing 5 damage. Push on Brawler. Now we just need one creature to connect, but our opponent might have another Bowmasters to double chum block, which will potentially keep them alive. So we'll discard land and draw. And a Battle Rage, alright, that's the perfect solution to a Bowmasters chumping. Well, definitely had a nice draw here, finding additional creatures after the early discard. And that's why Battle Rage is in the deck, perfect for trampling over those pesky 1-1s. One awesome, on to the next one.
Okay, we're on the draw. Missing a creature, so that's a mulligan. This is better. So, how do we want to sequence? Could play Giver if we name White, but then I can't play turn 2 Kavu. So maybe Giver just has to go. And then if this name's White, I can still get the full domain eventually. And then Gaius Might plus Battle Rage is quite the combo. Put in Black Green. And a Lunar Elves, okay. Let's see, does that change what we want to play here? I don't think so. Priest, Sacrifice deck. Now I don't really want to play Kavu into Priest anymore. So how about a Brawler instead? But I might be playing with Tyvar, which is pretty sweet with all the Elves and Priest. Likely keeping up a Collected Company. Sadly, don't have a Spell Pierce to counter it. So, what's our plan? I could play Temple Garden untapped, and then we can still Gaia's Might, plus play Kavu. And I guess I should play Kavu first, in case I want to sacrifice that to the Priest. And then we could see Company Response. We don't. Okay, points at 15. And there's company. Blood artist and familiar. Opponent can activate priest if they want or they can untap first. And I just have to hope I get to keep one creature alive to set up Battle Rage plus Gaia's Might next turn. Samwise, alright, so now our opponents might have the infinite combo. They don't have a sacrifice outlet that they can use repeatedly. Otherwise, Familiar plus Sam is uh, infinite damage, basically. Another Familiar. So they're gonna sacrifice both Familiars. I think we keep Kavu. But it's gonna be tough since our opponent gained enough life here where they're not dead to Battle Rage plus Gaius Might. So I may need to top deck another Gaius Might. And now Woe Strider should give them the infinite combo since our opponent can bring back Cat with the food token. And then, uh, yeah, just keep on sacrificing the Cat, making food with Samwise. And draining us for one each time. So that will be game over. Alright. Can let them go through it, but this is going to take a minute, so we'll scoop it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems promising. We've got the Proving Ground, can play Portal. Although, we will have to name either red or green if we want to play turn 2 Kavu, and then we're not getting an extra basic land type. Leyline Binding, so I could also just name white here, and then wait until we get a red or green source, and then for now I can play 2 mana Leyline Binding. We're up against the Wizards, so just important to get Kavu above 3 toughness. Balmor, okay. I think Balmor is slightly more threatening than Symmetry Sage at the moment, since it can pump the entire team. Although Symmetry Sage is definitely still worth answering. Okay, the Brawler is likely to die to Wizard's Lightning, but I think I'm okay running it out here. So just hoping for any land that produces red or green, which is most of the lands in our deck, even if it does potentially come into play tapped. So Lightning takes care of Brawler. Take three. And piece it together to draw a card. So that can eventually let them take an extra turn if they can cast it multiple times, maybe with an Arcanist. There's our headquarters. So now we could play another Leyline Binding. Could also Tribal Flames the Symmetry Sage and keep Binding for later, which I actually don't mind. Because then next turn what we can do is play Kavu and still play Leyland Binding alongside it. Soulscar Mage could shrink down our Kavu, so that's also potentially worth taking out. 
and charge to give it haste. That was a reason to hang on to Leyline Binding, is exiling a creature that they try to target with haste. But that's alright. We'll play Cavu and pass. Could also exile the Reckless Charge with it. And if they want to shrink down our Cavu, we can exile Soulscar Major in response. This charge going face, alright, so that's definitely gonna hurt. Taking damage of Thrain Portal doesn't help. And Soulscar attacks. So I'll block, forcing them to cast another burn spell here on Cavu. And then we'll exile the Soulscar Mage in response. So at least we made them waste a burn spell. And then now the damage doesn't stay since Soulscar got answered. Okay, so our opponent's at 16. We can kill them pretty quickly here with double Cavu and Gaius Might. I don't think we can uh, play Firebrand and Cavu since we only have the one red source. So we'll attack. I could exile the Reckless Charge, which is probably safest in case I play a Symmetry Sage. And then we'll have Cavu back to block Den if they decide to animate it. And then next turn with our Gaius Might, we should be able to cross the finish line. Mentor's Guidance to draw, that's fine. There's Symmetry Sage. Oh, is it a Reckless Charge? It is not, luckily. Alright, so we can attack. Opponent's probably gonna take it. And then we can Gaius Might for the win. Can discard and draw. Could draw into another Tribal Flames as well. Angel Fire Ignition would have been nice. Opponent's gonna take it, and before damage, Gaia Smite for plus five. And there we have it. Alright, so we got to see our five color domain deck in action. And yeah, the deck's definitely a ton of fun if it gets to curve out and assemble all five basic clan types. Not always the most consistent deck, might need to take a mulligan or two early on just to make sure you have all those basic clan types. And then if you face one of those black mid-range decks that can open up with a discard spell into a fatal push, you may not have any creatures left, and then you'll be staring at your Gaia Smite. But in other matchups, if you get to Gaia Smite into Team or Battle Rage, you can definitely steal some wins. So overall, not the most competitive deck for the rank ladder, I would say, but if you have the cards for it, it's a ton of fun to play. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.